I'm going to have to stop. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, December 4th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I'm the Wombat. Cool. Our guests today are Swedish Steve, all the way from Sweden. Welcome, Steve. Well, thank you. Our digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. But we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Hey, it's a mailbag episode. We'll be talking about belief, psychosis, and all listener feedback since, you know, our last couple of episodes. Well, we'll certainly address it. Thanks. Nice. So normally at this point, we would either do an invocation or we start talking about uh, John Richard's quest for chaos as the leader of all atheists in the UK. Uh -huh. but, you know, I, I it's rarely get an opportunity to just check in with everybody to see how they've been. Uh, Swedish Steve, we'll walk on with you. You've got a new kid. Uh, you're living up there where it's still probably covered in 10 feet of snow. What's going on with you? How you been? Well... It's okay. It's starting to get Christmas and people are like, we should go back to the old ways of the Norse religion. Nice. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, it's it, it's quite funny. Cool. And and uh, we don't get that much snow outside, but it's dark as yeah. 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 Our our so you probably do time zone changes. Do you do like a daylight savings time thing where you yeah, 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 yeah. We have yeah. that as well, but Tennessee, we live in a state that's very, very long, so it stretches yeah. multiple time zones. And mm -hmm. so one side always gets, unfortunately, the, the the short end of the stick, and it's our side that does. I don't know, Larry, if you're on our side, if you're more median, but it's really no, terrible. We're, we're in the Eastern time zone. so Okay. It, yeah. We're central, and it's dark yeah. when we wake up, and it's dark when we go back to work or come mm -hmm. back home from work. It's terrible. It's really bad. Yeah. We're waiting yeah. for it to be nice. Yeah. Larry, how you yeah. been? What's going on with you? Oh, not a lot. Just working and playing computer games. That's about it. Uh, yeah, the one thing I hate about winter is not the cold. It's the dark. And you get so much darker. And it's it's not that bad compared to a place like Sweden or something. But, you know, it's still a lot of dark. And I, I don't, I especially don't like driving in it with all the bright lights in my eyes and all that stuff. Right. But other than that, I'm doing fine. You know what gets guy. me? It's not the cold and it's not the dark. It's the hope. It's the hope that I find really annoying. <laughs> Because every year there's people being like, well, it's the last time we'll ever do daylight savings time. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be the last yeah. one, guys. It's going to be the last yeah. one. It's getting pushed through. It's the last mm -hmm. one. Maybe next year we won't have it. I'm just like, you say that every year. Mm -hmm. Don't you realize we're in a spiraling pit of despair? No one's going to change <laughs> for this. We're going to live with this. This thing yeah, that no seems, one wants. Yeah, it seems that way. Yeah, sure. this radically popular thing that everyone wants to get rid of. Like every single, so we have a, we in the US, we have a Senate and we have a House. The Senate hate each other. When we had like the last uh, terrorist attack led by our own president back at the time, when they were like rushing the Capitol, they were attacking the Senate because those guys were in, inciting that fight against each other and they're all huddling and trying to kill each other. And these are the people who all uniformly agree, unum unanimously agreed, let's get rid of the daylight savings time. They did it in a day. They were like, we hate this. Get rid of it. And we thought, oh, man, the Senate passed it. I guess the House has to as well. House is like, now nah, we don't want to deal with it right now. I'm just like, why not? We all, all of America, even the Senate agrees that this is a terrible yeah. thing. It's a crazy thing. All right. That's my <laughs> rant for the day. I apologize. There might be more to come. There might be more to come. But yeah, I've heard, I've heard a really great quote before we get into the topic of the show that hope may not lead anywhere. But it creates when people follow it, it creates a path. <laughs> a, a path. <laughs> a path. P A T H. Like, yeah. yeah, and that sounds nice, but I just hope it's not a path to nowhere. So let's try to make that into a productive path. It's a circular path. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wanted to talk about some of the comments that we got over the the last couple of episodes. 
uh we are sitting on you know about 17 over the last three episodes that we've done i really appreciate all the feedback not to mention just like you guys willing to speak up and give us some really nice not necessarily critical but like really supportive um words mentioned and good questions go over i want to talk about one of the questions that we got today this is off of the topic can you choose your beliefs where we were talking about um people being able to choose their beliefs and is that potentially uh considered like a potential mental illness if you can self-delude yourself and how would you address that what's the you know what's the most beyond politically correct what's the most apparent way to describe something like that and so i'm just there left this comment and asked why isn't believing that god is talking to you not considered a form of psychosis they also have an extra sentence here. How is believing that some invisible thing is talking to you not considered a form of psychosis? <laughs> right. Well, if you consider anything else, like if you believe that uh, leprechauns were talking to your fairies or the Easter bunny, that mm. would be considered a psychosis. But it's a societal norm that uh, mm. steps in and uh, thinks, you know, maybe he is. Maybe God is talking to you because we all know God is real and he talks to people. It says so in the Bible. I, I I was in this discussion with my uh, my Bible group. Yeah, I'm in a Bible group, uh -huh. um, and they start talking about how they met God and what, what what he had said to him and Jesus and all that. And then they asked me, "How do you feel when when we tell you about these things?" And I mm -hmm. said, "Well, I don't say that you're a liar, but." Uh, I would say that uh, it sounds like uh, mass psychosis. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you can you can have a range of replies to that. The the most blunt would be you know that you're lying, but you could also be very kind and say you interpret what you feel as something that is coming from a supernatural source. You know, it's because of the way that you were raised, the input that you got, you know, growing up from the people you trust most. Um, you know, it could be anywhere in between. My question is, in the Bible, there are lots of supernatural beings, including Satan. When you hear a voice telling you to do something, how do you automatically jump to the fact that it's a God or your God or not an angel, not Satan, not a demon? You know, it's just God. It could be any of those according to the scriptures yeah I especially gotta, if that voice tells you to kill your firstborn child yeah that's pretty bad yeah so i have a bit more of a nuanced take on this because obviously if you if you lost if you believe in something so if you believe in something that's you know clearly not demonstrable to the point where it's making you lose contact with external reality that's a psychosis right but there's a lot of different reasons why people believe. I'm only saying this because I used to be a believer. And I ran into a situation where I knew it wasn't real, but I chose to believe anyway, because that was one, what I was told. Two, would make my life easier. Three, I was trying to believe in it because I wanted to be a better Christian. I wanted to have that relationship with God. Like, mm -hmm. It, and this wasn't always the case when I was a kid I believed anything right but like it was when I was beginning to lose my faith and I wanted to like hard curve back I'm like I know you can't just touch water and have wine come out of it like wine has a completely different molecular structure than water there's additional atoms there that you're adding in that's not just a standard transition you can do at room temperature like if you just it's not Kool-Aid for crying out loud. <laughs> There's a lot more to it. I know you can't walk on water. I would never try walking on water. I've never seen anybody do it. Like I know what ice is and I know surf tension. Like that's not going to work. I know it didn't happen, but maybe that I don't have to believe in those crazy little stories to believe in the big picture. Like I'm constantly hedging my, my belief towards the big picture, which is a God does exist. Maybe a lot of the stuff in the Bible isn't true, talking mm -hmm. snakes, all this other stuff. I know that's not real, but I will still choose to believe in that God. Now, is that is that wishy-washiness of a Christian where I'm like just trying to find the, the, the most objective path to that God? Is that a form of psychosis? Or am I lying to myself? Like, what would you guys call that? I'd be interested. Larry, I'll talk. I'll start with you. What do you think about that? I know it's not well, true, but I'm choosing to I believe. I think a large portion of, of wanting to believe is wishful thinking. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, you you feel that the problem was with you, not with the belief itself. Mm -hmm. That was what I thought of when I was in college, I mean, high school. Growing up, my mother was a very religious woman, and she always told me, you know, that, that what's in the Bible is true, you know, what I needed to believe, and to make sure that I always believed that, because as soon as I don't believe it, the devil will get me, Right. that type of thing. Uh, but, you know, I, I internalized it in that I was thinking that my doubts are my own, it's, it's the devil testing me, and I'm sure there are a lot of Christians out there right now that think that. So, I mean, that's just part of it, it's just part of the... Uh, the worldview of, of the religious person. That's a really good point. You feel like the problem is with you. You internalize it, right? Rather and than the, the, on the, belief the pastors tend to reinforce that as well. Mm, very true. You know what sucks too is you you internalize the bad stuff, but any good stuff that happens to you, you give to the belief. So mm -hmm. it's like, hey, this really great thing happened to me. Thank God. This really terrible thing happened to me. I need mm -hmm. to ask for forgiveness. That's on me. It's yeah, that's why really it's never funny. God's fault when you fumble the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but when you make that touchdown. <laughs> right, right, right. Swedish Steve, what do you think? If I know something is not true, but I choose to believe it anyway, is that a psychosis as well? No. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things we, we choose to believe in uh, non-Christian religious ways. Um, just MAGA, for example. Mm. <laughs> that's the, the big lie. Sure. Uh, and we have lots of that kind of things. So I wouldn't say it's a psychosis, but uh, I wouldn't say, I, w I would more say like, like Larry said, you allow yourself to lie. Mm. Ah, Dada's Trading Room says in the chat, I know that Santa Claus doesn't exist, but I choose to believe in him anyways, is in fact a totally illogical and nonsensical statement, but most people don't realize this fact. They simply have never really thought deeply about what it means to believe. <clears throat> well, a lot of, some people are afraid of thinking per se, because, uh, you know, even religious leaders will say, you know, you think too much. You, you know, you send your son to college and he learns how to think and he gets away from Christianity. You sure. know, they, they have a, they have, they seem to have a problem with that. Here's, here's my, here's my other take. You know, the whole nature of faith, right? is mm -hmm. explicitly believing things without critical thinking applied, right? Uh, the actual definition is, what is it? Uh, there's two of them in the Bible. One is the substance of things hoped for and unseen, uh, belief or conviction without actually, you know, having any evidence. And I'm just like, that's a terrible explanation of what that could be. And people are like, the Christians who are watching the show are like, that's a terrible definition. Ha ha. Let me show them with the fact. And if you read it from the definition, it's the actual Bible. It's even worse than my summary but the main mm -hmm. thing is don't use critical thinking don't think too hard be like a sheep blessed are those who don't ask questions right blessed are those right. who without any kind of testing like that is such a terrible foundation to put such a, a, a such an important claim or such a a, a a a statement of the thing that's most important to you like you you shouldn't even test it but the it's it's endemic of don't critically think and so if the, someone says you need to believe in god and they're also telling you don't think critically about it. It's like, it's like the two punch combo of I'm I'm selling you a lie. I'm selling you a lie that I believe. Just believe in it too, so that we can profit off of it. You know, we'll get the good stuff. But the more you think about it, the more it falls apart. And the only thing that that happens to is lies, because the truth wants you to keep thinking about it. The truth wants you to keep poking around at it. So I'm really unfortunate. I think it's a really unfortunate thing that we just have, you know, a lot of people wishful thinking to the point where it actually is affecting not just external reality, but my reality as well. <laughs> yeah. Palm, oh, we'll do another comment. Palm the needle driver says, when you gather enough followers, instead of being considered psychotic, you're just a prophet. At some point when your popularity spreads far enough, folks center their entire lives around your delusions and are willing to even die for your sake. And that could be really dangerous, right? There's yeah. a there's consequences with changing the way how people believe. Um, what about a, as a mental illness? Swedish Steve, would you consider then, you know, people who are ardent in their faith, is that a form of a mental illness? No, I, I would say the mental weakness, but... Uh, mm. uh, I, w I wouldn't say illness. Um, like for a person like me, I, I have a bipolar disorder with schizoaffective problems. 
uh, I've had psychosis. Uh, and what I feel afterwards uh, is not like, oh, it was real. No, critical thinking. No, the Chinese ain't spying on me. The, 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 there, there ain't people moving around talking to me via telekinesis and stuff. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so, yep. so a weakness, but not an illness. I love the way you said that. I'm going to keep that in mind. It's not a weak mental illness. It's a mental weakness because it's something that could be overcome mm-hmm. yeah. with some practice and training. Yeah, and I'll have to remember that phrase. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a good point because it wasn't like I was indoctrinated into a mental illness. It was just taken at a time where my mental capacity was very weak and, and ignorant and pliable. And it was molded into the way how society wanted. And it took my effort and willingness to hold myself to a higher standard i had to work out my brain you know and and i got better as a result and now that i'm at the position where i'm at it's not like i'm saying listen i'm never going to change my mind again you guys are all wrong it's just the standard of what you're using to the standard you're using to believe this incredible thing is so low that i can't possibly lower my standard down to meet that but if your god exists ask him to meet my standard i'm one human being just have him meet my standard and I'll believe whatever he wants to, too. It's not up for me to figure that out. It's up for your um, pow- powerful guy. That, that is if he wants you to believe. If he I wants mean, me to believe. If, if God doesn't want me to believe, believe, it's not my problem. Yeah. Like all the preachers say, he wants you to believe. Well, he's got yeah. the capacity to show me the evidence to make me believe. Yes. And he also knows what that evidence is. Yeah. Because he knows everything. Right. But There's... he hasn't shown me. So, Swedish Steve, you'll love this. There's a show in America called Baggage. Baggage is a great show. It's hosted by Jerry Springer. It's a dating show. It's one guy and three girls or one girl and three guys. And they each have three cases of luggage, right? And they'll come out at the beginning of the show and the girl has to choose which of the three men she'll go out on a date with. But they open up their small little suitcase of baggage first. And the first one's like, I eat my toenails. And the other one's like, I have 40 cats. And the other one's like, (laughs) I never brush my teeth. And it's just like, why are these the guys it's like you got to know the baggage first we're getting it out of the way so you don't end up marrying them and realize they like chew bubble gum with every weird part of their body or stuff like that it's just like let's get all the baggage out of the way ahead of time one of the guys their baggage was i'm an atheist and in my head i'm like that's not that wouldn't be baggage to that me wouldn't be like, baggage. No. and, and the some lady, people it would yeah some people it would be and the lady was like well i'm very very spiritual is that a problem for you and he's like no it's not a problem for me if you're spiritual and it's just like well why don't you believe in a god it's like well, maybe you should ask your god that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does he talk to you <laughs> that it's would be like, more baggage <laughs> exactly it's like i shouldn't have to answer that like if you have a god that you believe in that's all powerful why don't why don't why don't you ask your God why I don't believe in him? And he'll he'll happily tell you. Or he'll be like, oh, I forgot to turn on Jerry's belief. There you go. I yeah. got you. Great. Yeah. I, I love the way how he handled it. He didn't win. And I don't think it would have been a good match anyway. But I'm remembering that comment as far as like good comments for atheists. It's like, don't ask me why I don't believe. Ask your God why I don't believe. And see if he That's responds. a really good answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, love that little attempt. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to throw out a couple more comments. Um, What do you guys think about? All right. So it is a decomposer who also posted on the comment of why isn't um, a religious belief considered a psychosis says it is, but only by us atheists. And it's maddening. Our politicians brag about having the psychosis and they control our lives. This is why we all need to meet here and console each other on the internet beats other less healthy coping mechanisms <laughs> and he lists some things like drugs and stuff like that so it's like yeah um i have made the point that it does feel like when you're an atheist and you're out it does feel like living in the twilight zone sometimes where your politicians your your parents a lot of authority figures they all have the god or our yeah. cross across their chest and you're just like mm-hmm. oh dang it for me I'll throw something out before uh, a round table, but like when I see like the struggle of black people in America, we put ourselves, we, we've been in chains for a long time at both like physically and mentally. And then like we, we've been freed. Right. 
And then I still see guys with like these giant chains around their neck with the cross on it. I'm just like, that's another chain because it's controlling how you're thinking. It's controlling how you treat women, right. how you see other people. <laughs> right. You, you, you've bifurcated society as an us and them. Like you could break that chain, dude. It's like, I'm not in chains. It's like, you literally got one around your neck. Anyway, that's just me. That's just mine. But it's, it's not just black people. It's just anyone. I just feel like, why right. handle yourself? Street of Steve is uh christian iconography when you see that is it so bizarre to you that you're like i need to talk to this person or or like yeah yeah a little bit <laughs> i'm I, it, it's so alien for me really mm. uh, it was like i said sweden was a great place for me to come out as an atheist because like nobody cared they were just like no. yeah and tomorrow is going to be tuesday like why yeah. are you Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. raise your I, hand if you're atheist and everybody puts yeah. their hands up yeah, yeah it yeah. was frightening because i came from georgia at that time <clears> the, West, <throat> the south and so like there was yeah. a lot of societal pressure and then when i got to live over there for a while it was just like no one cares and i was just like i'm an atheist no one cares yeah. i don't believe in god no one cares i was like oh this is amazing this is so great and then i came back and it was just like oh <laughs> This is rough. I'm going to need like 40 different friends. I'm going to have to do like a weekly podcast on just atheism. It was great. (laughs) Larry, when you see people with Christian iconography, do you think that's a person suffering from mental illness? Maybe someone trying to show to their peers that they're in the fold, but maybe they're not a genuine believer. Yeah, I mean, one of the major memes going around the internet right now is uh, how can you tell if someone's an atheist? The answer Mm -hmm. is they'll tell you. And it's like, we're always out. We're always in your face. We're always telling you that we're atheists, whether you want to know or not. They not, they don't realize that the Christians are doing that all the time. They have crosses, you know, that they wear all the time. They put uh, Jesus fish on the back of the car. You know, they, they, uh, what's worse for me is when I go into a doctor's office or a receptionist or something, and they have this Christian stuff all over the place. And I'm wondering, you know, how much of this medical medical recovery are they going to just hand over to God and not uh, take responsibility for it themselves? But it, it makes me just concerned a little bit about how how uh, they view the the patient client. I mean, relationship. Okay. Okay. Good points. Yeah. But uh, they are always, or it seems to be, they, they have no shyness at all about, oh, like even a, a waitress told me today, you know, uh, have a blessed day. You know, I didn't tell her, you know, that she should have a secular day. And it's, it's, it's like they're always pointing at us for things that they do. We got, we got one last comment before we go to the show break. I'd love to actually hear Swedish Steve respond to this. This is to you, Swedish. Um, It says, hello there, Swedish. I'm a 24-year-old boy from Greece that three years ago suffered from psychosis as well. It was really strange experience. I went from agnostic to believing that there was Jesus Christ or the Antichrist. Psychosis made me religious. I thought that I met God through depersonalization. I thought that I had lost my soul for three days. And the third day, I was resurrected again. And for a really long time, I thought that God was sending me signs. Like when I go to do something that I disagree with, I would hear a horn honk and think that was God who ordered me not to do it. I wanted to get baptized, and I also wanted to become a monk. It seems so funny to me that after three antipsychotics and one antidepressant that but then it's after I take my medicine, it just seems so real. After I take the medicine, it didn't seem real. I thought I also made a sin to never follow any faith and that God is punishing me for that. Right now, I try to avoid believing in any deity. Getting religious is like a sickness for me. So I avoid anything associated with God. Even if I have a religious delusion, I can say, but I'm an atheist. The belief in the Antichrist is Christian and I disagree with it. And the delusion just goes away. Yeah. A guy just affirming his life story. Yeah. 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 I'm happy good, you do that. I'm happy you yeah. You now have a mantra that can at least help you get away from your psychosis. That's really good. Yeah. Really good. I, guys, I, I, I can't, but. <laughs> also, going from, um, I, I feel like I'm susceptible to psychosis and having all these religious stories and religious pressure versus 
I need to get rid of this and taking the secular route and taking actual medication and like getting like actual tested lab tested uh, fixes to to real world problems and dressing them in a in a more objective way. Mm -hmm. Clearly shows a benefit for him compared to just reinforcing those beliefs with more superstition. Um, my heart really goes out to people who are in that same situation. If you do suffer from that, what would you recommend, Swedish Steve, if, if you are suffering from psychosis? Get help as soon go. as possible. Good point. It's, and modern it's medicine so has a, a pretty good yeah. understanding of the, the treatments now, so the help is available. Yeah. You just have yeah. to seek it. Yeah, oh, don't... often the best help is just get get into a, a hospital and get sleep and they will have the medication to to get you to sleep because often it's it's the lack of sleep that 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 um, makes your head spin yeah so might even create the situation itself if you, mm, if you yeah. don't get uh, sleep for a long time we need to take a break uh, any thoughts before we do no more comments after the break. Let's do it. Okay. Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour here on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Cool. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. John Richards from England has joined us. Welcome. Hello. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a moment. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year and have over 1,000 members here in Knoxville. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria right after work and last until about 8. Look for us inside at the high top table uh, or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom mask meetup. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or email to letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at facebook, meetup.com, or go to the website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Star one. That's right. I'll bet where you want to pick up. Hey, I want to talk about the nature of belief and who better to handle it than our own John Richards, master of chaos over in the UK. <laughs> Come as you are has a comment for you. He really supports your idea that you can choose your beliefs, but there's a stipulation. There's a little asterisk. So we'll do this. And I'd love to get your thoughts on the comment. It's not a direct question, but it is a affirmative statement of the idea that you can choose your beliefs. So come as you are says over our last episode, which was, can you choose your beliefs? Yes, you can choose your beliefs within the constraints of the program. What do I mean by that? Well, it's like an open world game where you can go anywhere you want, but only within certain constraints. Those being physical thought processes and the environment and how you perceive reality, or have you been told that, et cetera. Those are the standards that you have to place on your belief, or those are the standards that control your belief. Beyond that, you can choose them. What do you think about that, John Richards? Well, I, as I said before, I don't think we can choose our first belief because mm -hmm. that's thrust upon us when we're learning what it is to be a human. You know, we're, right, we're, right, right. we're born without any beliefs is my view. Because beliefs are something that have to be conveyed by language, and we're born without language. Uh, so in the same way that you're never born Democrat or Republican, you are also never born Muslim or Christian or whatever. But once you've been through the family induction, and right. whatever, whatever belief, your whatever faith system, your local society, your community Im imposes upon you, then you're in a hole <laughs> you've got to dig your way out right of, of course some people never do right but a lot of famous people have succeeded in doing that and i could name cassius clay or muhammad ali as a as a prime example of someone who changed his belief later in life sure in my opinion went from one hole to another hole right well I, I agreed but at least but he, you can he, do he, it he demonstrated choice Right, well, right, I, right. I, I, I would be the first to say, though, that he probably was a Christian before he, he switched his 
uh, matrix of belief in a God. In other words, he had belief in a God as an adult, mm -hmm. and then he switched to uh, Islam, um, apparently because he liked the teachings of Islam better. But right. if you if you study Christianity and Islam, it's the same God. Yeah. You know, so he, did he really change his his? Uh, did he choose to change his belief in a God, or just the matrix supports it? Here would be my here would be my thought process behind it. Like typically, if you get indoctrinated into religion, religion, you have what I like to call a God hole, like a giant hole that was put <laughs> into you by other people who dug it into you, and now you have a God hole. And when you leave your God hole, the hole's still there, right? And so what Cassius Clay may have done was like man, white Jesus is really annoying. <laughs> it doesn't seem to have anything in my interest. What about yeah. the the brown prophet who's worshiping the same God? That might be more on part with what I'm talking about because I think white Jesus is evil, which he is. And like he's got some probably good points and that's what fills his new God hole, a better shaped yeah. version. I don't, I don't know how brown the brown prophet is because of course there's a lot of Arabs in it and they're not very they're, brown. They're pretty brown. I'm just saying they're browner than white Jesus. That's all I'm saying. Have you seen okay. that guy's chest? You open it up. He's like a newborn baby. It's just like, ooh, no UV protection in the Mediterranean. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys, for that. Uh, <laughs> Sweetest Steve, I'd love to get your idea on whether or not you can choose your beliefs. What do you think about that? You, you you can. I was uh, when you were talking about Cassius Clay and uh, all that. I was thinking on use of Islam. Cat Stevens, hmm. he he went from atheist to to uh, Islam. Cassius so, Clay was an atheist. No, Cat Stevens. Cat oh, Stevens was an atheist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, well, uh, and then think... and then became Joseph Islam. Okay. Well, the thing about that, the way I would address that is that. He was convinced that a God exists, and it was the God of, Asia, of uh, is, Islam. The thing about it is, I don't believe that you can choose to believe. I believe that you are convinced to believe something. Right. Now, once you become convinced, it's not a choice. If I, if I could convince you that I had a, a dragon in, the, in my garage through evidence, you know, what rational argument, whatever, right. then you would then believe it. Right. You would be you would be convinced of it, but right. you didn't just choose to believe in, in a dragon in my garage any more than you could choose to believe in Santa Claus or a, a tooth fairy. John Rich well, is my take. Let, let's flip this on its head. Then can okay. you choose to disbelieve? No, I don't think you can. Can you take right. a a person who firmly believes in their God? You know, and 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 worships him with all his heart and then just say i'm going to choose not to believe in him yeah no i think that he's well, thoroughly convinced that can it I, exists what about, can what, I about win? All those, what about all the increasing number of nuns in the u.s then what's happening to them again I, they are becoming convinced right. by the evidence and logical arguments that god don't exist john and, here's here's larry's model in in and I, I have the same model as well it's just three steps it's one you have a standard of evidence if it meets your standard, and then two, if it meets your standard of evidence, you're convinced of it. And then belief comes as a function of you being convinced. It's like a three-step model. Same thing with disbelief. If it doesn't meet your standard of evidence, you don't believe it or you just lack belief in it. But if you become it, unconvinced, you become unconvinced. And then as a result, you you don't believe in it. And you can become, you can result in a state of disbelief if it's something you did believe in, if it doesn't meet your standard of evidence anymore. But that takes work. And that's what we, I know it's a bit more nuanced than just do you believe or do you not believe? It's more of like in, in the capacity where there, you have a bucket of things that you can't tell if they're true or not true, you have to apply a standard of evidence to it. And it's a question of how good your standard of evidence is, whether or not you're convinced it's true or not, whether it's completely false or not. And then as a result, you will believe in it or, or not believe in it. What do you think, John? Well, that's certainly not the case for your first belief, is it? Because you don't have any idea what criteria to apply. Actually, it, it, it does apply to because you have no standard of evidence. That's why you have babies born in Egypt who are Egyptians or Roman babies born believing in the Roman pantheon or uh, guys in China believing, you know, in Confucianism tale. That's less supernatural. But like, that's why there's so many people who are carrying over their parents' belief because they got to a point where they didn't have a meaningful standard of evidence. And so they believe or they were convinced of everything that they were told because it satisfied 
their very limited, very ignorant standard of evidence. And so what, when they were raised, uh, the yeah. earliest years. But it so wasn't what, until like you grow up and you improve your standard of evidence that you're like, wait a second, why do I still believe this? I can't believe in it anymore. I'm not convinced that it's true. I want to believe in it, but I can't believe in it. That's a problem. And it causes right. a lot of stress inside people. So, so what you're telling me is that the bar for adopting a belief is at zero. When like, you're absolutely fresh born? I think when you come out of the womb, it's at zero. And then as you begin to make patterns without language, you might make some patterns of like, hey, if I try to think about my hand, maybe I can make my hand move. Uh, this is my parent. She's taking care of me. If I cry, I get milk. Okay, if I knock this over the table, it falls. There's patterns here that I'm observing. People are making sounds and, they, and they're pointing at me and looking at me when they say certain sounds. Maybe I'll recognize that as like, my name and I can start calling other things names too. Oh, okay. Words have meanings. And now I'm going to keep using this pattern. And now I understand words. And now people are telling me with words that I understand about God and how to be kind to people. And that there's a person who's always looking at me and I'm believing them because I've always trusted them. They're the people who've always taken care of me. But at a certain point, like that doesn't cut it anymore. And you're like, wait a second, I'm in school now. I understand how things work. This is magic. Like I'm having a problem believing in these magical stories that have very limited ways of reinforcing that they're true. It's just ancillary stories of people saying that it's true. And if you bliss believe it, you go to hell. And that's not enough for me to be convinced that it's true, even though I want to believe in it. Who wants to be an atheist in America? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a really disadvantaged point of position to be in. Like you, well, your another... dating pool drops down. Like you're yeah. you're you're almost a danger if you're in, if you're yeah. Well, go on ahead, Blair. Go on ahead. Well, if if a lot of people, if they want to believe, they will seek out the people who will tell them stories and anecdotes and and show them stories in their holy books that will then eventually convince them be, but it all starts with wanting to believe and uh or you know like let's say that you you are a, a baptist and you marry a, a a catholic but she says you i won't marry you unless you convert yeah. so you all can you choose to believe the practices of the catholicism right over baptism which you've lived all your life no but you will say you do. You will practice those beliefs. But, you know, will they actually come? Maybe in 20 years, only because you've moved into that society. And, and the stories are reinforcing all the other stories that you hear in that society. And maybe that new religion can hopefully beat down your standard of evidence so low that you do genuinely become a believer. Like, there's people right. who do that, too. And, and then there's dementia. Become, I've seen <laughs> atheists. We've had them even on the show who were very good with their standard and then fall into a position where they're fairly lonely. Mm -hmm. And then the group says, listen, why don't you come over and just hang out with us? And they, they assuage them. And they're like, all yes. these questions you have, you don't need to ask them. You just need faith. You just need faith. Faith <laughs> is all about not critically thinking. You re reduce that standard to the point where it's like, maybe this God guy does exist somewhere. <laughs> well, We've well, seen that happen too here. Go on ahead. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Praying on the vulnerable is one of their tactics. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, Absolutely. Like, I know, I know several people who, because their their parents, the parental family fell apart, mm. they found comfort in the society of a church. But you know, this this is false pretenses. And I love the way that you you described what, it, what how did it go? These people who start out not Catholic, but because they marry a Catholic after twenty years, they might sort of begrudgingly adopted it sounds like hypocrisy to me it is it is yeah. listen yeah. this isn't a good thing we're not advocating that this is a good system like it's a terrible it's a terrible terrible thing to be like hey i love you but your most core belief to who you are needs to change <laughs> if we're gonna right. have babies it's like so bizarre it's like maybe we don't like each other how about that you know i always think a belief is like being wet or not wet right and your standard of evidence is like a dam right and you could have a high dam which is great or you could have a very very low dam but if you have a low enough dam, water's getting over it. That's like being convinced that something's the case. And you're going to get wet, but it's a function of the water coming over the dam. It's not a choice that you make. It's not like the dam breaks down and water's flying over. And you're like, I choose to get wet today. It's like it's a function of the water. <laughs> it's coming a low over standard of evidence. A low yes. standard of evidence. That's what we mean, Larry and I, typically when we say belief. And it's just so, a question of whether or not we're convinced or not. So, uh, I, I still, uh, I, I don't agree with that, but... Uh, I can't really explain in a better way that 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 I'm sure that people 
just everything is so hard. I just want to see some light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I become a Christian. Yeah, I can say that. Hey, that's just a low damn. You know, like I well, mean, that's yeah. wishful yeah, but, thinking. But, like we were talking yeah. about, that's where it starts. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they they can have a pretty big dam in in uh, other ways of life. Absolutely. Oh sure. Oh yeah, yes. Sure. Yes. yes. That's the double the standards. Irrational dichotomy of beliefs yes. of Christianity. Cognitive bias. Yes. And religious. Or cognitive dissonance. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and that frustrates me really badly because it's like watching a guy build a giant wall dam. I have guys who are in our lab, scientists, very smart guys who have very very high dams for every scientific principle for all the experiments we do, but are religious. And I've asked them questions like, so you you understand that this scientific principle is X, Y, Z? It's like, yep, and evolution's real and tectonic plates, I believe all that, but you still believe in a God. Well, you see this one time my my pastor made my uh, a leg grow like two inches for one of the guys who were in there. And I'm like, you have this giant dam for everything. And then you have this one section where it's like a foot high. And then there, it goes right back to a 10 story dam again. You've, you have this weird standard, double standard. And yes, yes that but, really bothers me. I see that. But that, that that's really a, a fake evidence. Oh, yeah. He, he has it been sucks. shown. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I mean, more a person knows full hearted that this can't be true by all logical means. But I choose to, to say that he believes. Yeah. Or, See, or, that's, or there's believe, a difference or, there. That's the difference. I, I don't think there has to be different. It can be different, but I believe or, or I think that people can choose just to brighten up their day or something to start believing yeah like, i wouldn't see much of a difference between that and wishful thinking but if you want to use that term belief i'm also fine with it too i don't i don't i'm not an oh. ardent believer that words only have one meaning they no 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 it, words it, have it's, multiple it's, usages. It's, it's probably a, a language barrier in this case yeah well it seems to me that if you're born at zero belief and it seems that this dam is more of a sinkhole <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and just fill it in <laughs> with whatever, which is why right. people can not be on religious beliefs. People can be indoctrinated with misogynist thinking, bigotry, racial prejudices, mm. um, just nationalism. Like, when, why do they tar? Can you imagine going to work as an adult and starting every day with a pledge to the the flag? Oh, you don't know about this, you guys. But in America, they do a pledge of allegiance. Yeah, to we know. You, oh, you know about that? Do you guys do anything yeah. close to that? Or is it like, no, God <laughs> save the queen, nothing it's, like that? It's no. amazing to us when we see pictures or visit America and we see all these gardens with flags in them. You don't find that in the UK. You don't find that in the UK. Okay. No, no, I don't know of any garden that has a Union Jack flagpole. Right. But, but, they, but, the but still, you. You, you, you have uh, stopped with the Bellamy salute, and that's a great evolution. Yeah, yeah. Be, be, because doing uh, the Nazi uh, thing, I no. Right. No, right. So the reason why they target kids is because they're impressionable. They're targetable. Their standard of evidence is low enough that you can indoctrinate a nationalism in them. It's why advertisers repeat the same motto, even when they know it's not true. It's like four out of five doctors agree that, but you know, they didn't say that, but if you say it enough times, they will. If you say America is the best country in the world enough times, people in, in America, when they start out young, will continue to believe in it and carry that message sure. on to their adults. It's support the troops. It's like, for what? What, what? what are they doing? Are they doing something terrible? I mean, don't want to support that. But support them, support them, support them. So like, it's the same message, make America great again. Like all these catchphrases that like permeate culture in the US are targeting people of low standards so that they maintain it even into their voting age and then carry over with that. And it makes them speak out to other people that, hey, I am a Christian. Hey, I am a blah, blah, blah. Because when they make themselves publicly known that they're a certain thing, there's that, that ego momentum that keeps them from having to say, oh, actually, I changed my mind and now I'm something else. No one wants to go through that effort. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, was, this was originally a, a topic on what were we talking about? <laughs> I have no idea. All right, guys. <laughs> Dada's Trading Room has a counter comment on the idea of belief. Uh, this one's targeted at John Richards. John Richards, don't take this the wrong way. He says, John Richards has a nonsensical belief on belief. They 
though he doesn't understand what it means what it means to believe if one is aware that something is nonsensical they don't believe this thing exists in reality so how can they logically say that they believe in that i'm trying to understand the, the sense. does that make sense to you john no nope. no nope. all right let me try reading it one last time dot us all right or john richards statement that you can believe in nonsensical beings is nonsensical or they don't believe what to believe means they don't understand what the word means if one is aware that something is nonsensical they don't believe this thing exists in reality so how can they logically say that they believe in that i get it so it's sort of like saying hey if you believe that santa claus um doesn't exist how can you choose to believe if you know that santa claus doesn't exist how can you choose to believe in santa claus if you know that's that's what he's saying he's saying if you know something isn't true how can you choose to believe in it that's what he's asking you do you understand right. that? Well, well yeah yeah this is this is the difference between belief and knowledge here isn't it because a belief is an attitude it's you know a, a positive attitude <laughs> If it's a you know a, a belief in something, okay. or a negative attitude, if it's a disbelief towards some proposition, but knowledge, I would contend that knowledge is something different. It doesn't matter what your brain, what attitude your brain has towards it, it's out there, and and it's unaffected by who believes in it, how many pe people believe in it. It's information that anybody with the right equipment can gather. Okay, it's okay. Immune, it's not vulnerable to belief. So, Swedish Steve, you also support that belief as an attitude? Yeah, wholehearted. Okay, okay, okay. Like I said, I'm aware that there's different usages of words, especially in English, especially across so many different cultures. I would just say, like, just make sure we understand what we say when we say belief, because I think, John Richards, you understand what you mean when you say belief, but other people may not when you say it, because more... Yeah. Different people just have different usages it, it, of that word. It is That's a it. word. It, it is a word. There are lots of words like this, but this is a, a particularly pertinent one. It's right. a word that has more than one meaning. Right. Right. It can be used, and I wouldn't use it for this purpose myself. Mm -hmm. It can be used for mere acceptance of known information, like mm -hmm. I believe in the force of gravity. Well, you don't need to. You right. Know? You're wasting your time. There's nothing to consider there. It is a fact. Don't it jump out the change. window. It doesn't change right? either way, right? Yeah, yeah. But there is another way of using belief, which is a preference for a dubious proposition. Like, mm -hmm. I believe my horse will win this race. Well, right. go on, but it's not going to make a heap of a difference. Right. Like, I believe my sports team will win the championship. Exactly. Like, you don't yeah. have a way of testing that until you actually see it. But you and, can. And then afterwards, your belief or disbelief is irrelevant because mm. it's happened and, and it's now a piece of knowledge. Mm. And I also believe that you can have unwarranted beliefs. Like you oh, can definitely. believe in things that are absolutely not true. And yes. so if it's ever a question of belief or knowledge, I'm always reliant on knowledge, right? I'm always yes. gonna be reliant on knowledge. And in the place where I don't have knowledge to confirm a belief, I would choose not to have the belief, which doesn't Very necessarily well. mean that I disbelieve in the claim, it just no. means I'm lacking, I'm withdrawing my exactly. belief, or I, I have no belief because I can't be convinced that it's You're true. You're not convinced. Have the knowledge. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, you can, you can sit in the middle. It's, I'm sitting on the not believing side. <laughs> 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 there is no middle ground there. It's like you either believe it or you don't believe it. And I'm sitting on not believing, which isn't the same as disbelieve it, positively disbelieving. It's just, hey, I'm with the guys who aren't believing you. And mm -hmm. you got to make a better claim or a better statement. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing, guys. Uh, Larry, how are we on time? We're getting pretty close. We need to start winding down. Okay, okay. We can start winding mm. down. Well, I've got lots of things to say. How the devil are you and what stuff can we check out? Yeah, well, on Tuesday, the AUK, Atheism UK organization, staged an event in, in London in the very famous Conway Hall, which is the home of the Ethical Society, I think it was um, sponsored originally 100 years ago by the Bertrand Russell family. Anyway, we had we hired a room there and we invited Professor A.C. Grayling to come and speak to us. Sadly, we sold lots of tickets on Eventbrite too. Sadly, he fell sick and was unable to attend. It's 
flu. And you know how that can make you feel horrible. And we wish him a rapid recovery. But I had to run around like a mad thing and provide an alternative because I, I didn't know until the lunchtime of the day that he was not going to be able to attend. And this is what I got. I got half an hour of visual contact with the following. Lawrence Krauss, Peter Singer, and Stephen Pinker. Excellent. And that's been videoed. And this morning we had an Atheism UK council meeting and we've decided that we will release that video in pieces. Each speaker had half an hour and we will release it initially to our membership, make it available only to them. And then subsequently at a later date, we will release it to the unwashed public. It's not compulsory to be unwashed, by the way. <laughs> no, look forward to it. Yeah, and that's that's what I've been doing with my AUK hat on. Of course, I've also been busy with my Free Thought channel. I, I say my Free Thought channel. We're we're a team, including nice. Steve. Hello, Steve. Nice, <laughs> nice to see you here. And uh, Steve is our our producer, and and so we've we've got new shows coming up there every. There's one later on today, and I hope you'll be able to join us, Ty. I'm Great. Down. Let's do it. Great. Excellent. Yeah. So we had uh, a good meeting yesterday with uh, psychiatrist Scott Weigold and anthropologist um, David Orenstein. Oh, when we discussed cool. we discussed this very issue, the oh, difference right. between belief and knowledge and what, what truth means. And you can see that it's already on Free Thought Channel. Hmm. And uh, please go and take a look and, nice. and set the notifications, subscribe, you know, we'll do all the usual like share and subscribe yeah i just want to like you know english is a part of culture culture evolves culture is going to change words will change as a result too and we'll adopt new messages the main thing what we shouldn't do is say oh the main thing we shouldn't do is say hey i'm going to believe in words meaning only this and and crossing my arms and never being open to change or anything like that that's too conservative just be aware of the new ways that people are using terms and mm -hmm. also the old ways and be willing yeah, to be yeah. flexible with it that's how yeah. we can engage ourselves. Don't use words, well, as a word, but use them as a way to bridge gaps. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I would contend that the word belief had a great deal more importance 150 years ago, sure all that time previous oh, yeah. to 150 years, than it has now, because exactly. it was deemed to be pretty much the only way that you could mm. access information. Exactly. By, by believing what the religious people told you. But right. then, then science got... It, it, science girded its loins right. and we now have an alternative source of information which is much more reliable it's called knowledge it's pretty great yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's exactly. hope knowledge doesn't change over years i know i know religious people <clears throat> may try to kowtow words and be like well i know god exists because of what it's like do you know can you demonstrate that please yeah. demonstrate it for me it's like well knowledge doesn't mean you can demonstrate it knowledge just means <laughs> that you have a lot of faith in it it's, it's like oh yes. get away from me i don't want that it, it's no good you knowing it's got to be shareable <laughs> It's got we, to be um, shareable. My, my yeah. final words are, my final words are uh, if anyone asks you why you're an atheist, just say, ask your God, and he'll yes. tell you. <laughs> that is if he speaks to you. Yeah. My, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. If you go there, be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. My YouTube channel handle is at doubter5. And you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll enjoy your life. We'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on Wozo Radio. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Great show. And it's a